Good morning, baby. Did you just get a bath? So you go to the doctor? Yeah. Say hi, camera. You say hi. Hey guys, it's Kalani here, and welcome back to my channel. I know this is only my second video, um, and I had high hopes for it this week, but you know, everything doesn't work out like you always hope for them to. But this week was a really tough week starting Monday. I was going to take the camera along with me to vlog like what we did in the day, and we had appointments, and then like if we went shopping, I was going to take it along. Um, but it was raining really bad. I was late. Um, it was just tough. And I have like a little footage of it, but nothing that I really wanted. Anyways, so. I'm just gonna explain here what went on this week. And um, I don't know all the answers to everything yet, but. Um, on Monday, I think it was, she had her first appointment and for the week, and um, it was to check for hip dysplasia. One of her therapists um, has noticed one leg is longer than the other one on Kendra Lee, and so she just really looked into it a little bit more and just was pretty obvious that something is off with her hips. So um, I was really scared, but I had to go through the other surgery that she just had and I didn't want to like stress about it. So I just like put it at the back of my mind and we did the other surgery that she just came through. And as soon as she felt better, I got her into the doctor to check this out. And um, the doctor was pretty concerned. She like checked it and she said she felt one I think was really tight or she couldn't really bend it like she should be able to and she said you know I've done this a lot of times on this baby and I've never noticed this before so I was pretty scared just because the poor baby doesn't need another surgery and so she got us right down to radiology and got us into an x-ray and she made an orthopedic appointment for us and the x-ray shows that there is not hip dysplasia but that um, there's something a little off I'm not exactly sure what we still have to go to the orthopedic doctor and figure out what's wrong there and then we had the next day we had to go back down to Children's Hospital which is like an hour and I went solo with both of them. And that was to check up on her surgery she just had. I don't really know how to explain it. It definitely made me cry. It was just tough. She just had a surgery to relocate her bottom. I know that's probably TMI, but I don't really know how else to say it. And um, there's like this dilating process that we have to go through now. And we have to start at an 8, go up to do that for a week, go up to a 9, do that for a week. And then I think we have to keep going up sizes for a few weeks. And we have to keep going back to check up on that. And I might be crazy, but that is so exhausting. Like appointment after appointment, it totally exhausts me. And going back to Monday, we were in the specialty care center and we um, were going into the elevator and of course we have a two-year-old and she's cute and she brings attention and this lady came with us or we might have been in there first, I'm not exactly sure. And she had a little girl that was in a wheelchair and um, she was adorable. But she, her mom said she was having a really rough day. And there was really any communication with the little girl. But I could just tell that the mom knew what she was talking about. And it was like, 
I was standing in that elevator and she was talking and I was just like in tears because like Kalani don't cry like, I'm just talking to myself like you can get through this don't cry don't cry and then we ended up going down to radiology together and the little girl is sitting back with her head back and then her mom undid her and she's six years old and her mom took her and was holding her and she looked at us and she said it doesn't get any easier they just get bigger and it wasn't in a bad way like you could tell this mother loved that baby with all of her heart and it's just something with being a special needs parent it's not that you don't love them or that you have any resentment towards them or anything like that you love them with all of your heart just like any other one of your children and it's not that you don't care about them it's it's not that at all but just seeing your child day in and day out and they just continue to be a baby and they don't continue to do anything I'll just tell you it has been almost suffocating and I know that I'll get through this process it just takes time and I'm gonna get through it but right now I'm just at a point where I'm just gonna have to give it to God and he's just gonna have to take it this, and I don't know if he I know he can and he is totally able to and it's not that like I'm trying to hold on to this or it's just a process I have to get through and like she was sitting there talking about it and I was literally like just trying so hard not to cry just bust out in tears because it's just like I see my future before me and it's just hard it's just really hard I don't really know how else to explain it and I've just really been struggling with um, you know going through the summer up to last summer and I was pregnant last summer I knew nothing was wrong with my baby everything looked good and like I just try to avoid anything I did last summer because I always would think by next summer I'm gonna have a baby getting into stuff and it's summer and we have a baby but she's no really I mean she's a sweetheart but she's no different than than you know a baby like a newborn baby and she's a little bit advanced than a new newborn baby but she, you know the most she does is play with her toys and sometimes she smiles at me and now it seems like she connects with me when she looks at me sometimes a lot more than she used to and I'm thankful for that I'm thankful for everything that she does do or she's gonna do like I have high hopes for her I don't feel like it's hopeless I feel like we just need to continue therapy and do as much therapy as we can and stay consistent and love her as much as possible and I'm going through like this like feeling like I should feel mom guilt right now and feeling like I've got to let it go because my um, mom I met her the other day and she took Kendra Lee for most of the week and you know it's really hard like I would have never in a million years let Carlia go at 10 months old ever and it's not that I don't care about her as much as I do Carlia I do but it's just frustrating because like I can't nurse her I can't like like I know that she needs me and I'm the only one that can give her everything that she needs because I'm her mom but at the same time it's it's just really really hard because it's like you know Carlia needed me at 10 months old like she was pretty much only breastfeeding still and there was just no way I would have let her go and this this next baby if it's if it's normal and everything's okay I doubt I would let it go but this is so much different and I love that baby with all of my heart but the struggle and the strain that it's been and it is every single day 
we do not have nursing right now and she it's a challenge like it's just a challenge like there's been nights she's been sleeping through the night but it's it is really hard and I just feel tired all the time and I feel so bad like I should feel bad that I let my mom take her for a week but I can't feel like that like it is so hard that I find myself in a real in really bad places because I feel so tired so exhausted and then like the day in and day out of no break and just seeing everything that she should be doing that she's not and it's just it is such a heavy burden and I'm just trying my best to give it to God right now at this point and I just want to be to a place where I can look at her and just look at her and be grateful for everything that she is because something that really helps me is to watch YouTube and watch where you know things are way worse because it helps me put it into perspective that I have a lot to be thankful for and I'm aware of that like I have so much to be thankful for but I just want to say that that doesn't make this easy and I know that I put a lot out there but you know it is what it is and you know if anybody would you know not see it the way I see it I understand everybody has different points of views and ideas but I just know like how I'm struggling personally and how everything affects me personally and I mean sometimes I wish you know maybe I wish I just would have been like 30 before I had children and I would be so much more like emotionally um, mature, more mature and I would just like know how to do everything better and I'm just 21 and I feel lost in this special needs mom world like I don't really I don't really know exactly how to be a special needs mom and I'm just learning and I'm hoping that I can help other people learn help other people just get through anything they're going through with being a special needs parent or a parent in general like I just want to say that when I had my first baby and she came out so healthy and I like sent a message out or Facebook you know we had a healthy baby like I had no idea what I was saying none like just no idea because now I'm on the flip side of knowing what it's like to not have a healthy baby and this next pregnancy that I'm currently in like it's hard for me to just believe that it's gonna be healthy like I have nightmares so much that it has terrible problems and it, it's awful I'm just you know trying to give it to God and, and just get through this time because I know it's just a time and I will get through it but just if you have healthy children just hug them and kiss them and just be so grateful for it because it doesn't happen for everyone and I know that like I'm one in a million people out there that struggle with this like when I see some baby drinking a bottle, it's just like my eyes are glued because it's like, how does it just do that? <laughs> I know that's probably funny, but um, anyways, I just hope I can be a help to somebody or, um, you know, let you know if you're in this place that you're not alone and sometimes you need a break and it's okay. It's, it's totally okay. Anyways, I know that was so much more than just my week. And we did.
did get some work done on the house and I would love to put that in this vlog also. I'm so excited about it. Some days I get overwhelmed when the baby's crying and it seems like I can't even get my laundry done. But <laughs> anyways, I am really excited about the house and we tore plaster down and <laughs> it was so fun. Like I have I used to work really hard <laughs> at a rental center and with my parents at a pallet mill and then um, <laughs> I got married and soon after got pregnant and I've just been rocking babies for like two years and like to actually work again tearing down plaster and getting dirty it was so fun like it was so fun like I enjoyed it so much. Anyway, so I'm gonna put that in there. It's gonna be really funny. But I hope you guys enjoy and I will see you next time. I hope you guys like and subscribe and wait for more videos. I'm gonna try to be persistent where I put videos up all the time. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. So, when you don't have a big truck to drive around, and you have kids, you just put... We have one, it's just broke. Yeah, it's just broke. It's really old too. It's probably gonna break as soon as we fix it. I'm just kidding. So, you just put all of this into your little minivan. Right, Carlia? Right, Carlia? <laughs> you got enough room to make it home? <laughs> it goes all the way from up here to past Kendrilly. Carlia, what do you think? Huh? And just an inch or two of room. You do what you gotta do. So it is 11 o'clock p.m. almost, and we just went to Home Depot. Now we're on our way to our new old house to drop off all these supplies so that we can get up early tomorrow and go tear down the plaster in the ceiling and hopefully get stuff done. What do you think, David? You've been working like how long? Oh, well, no. I mean, I kind of had a break when I got home. But you got up at what time this morning? Five. Five something. Wow. I sure didn't get up that early. Makes me feel bad. Anyways. Here it goes. It's going to be fun. Good morning, David. So, morning. I was wondering uh, what you're doing. I'm uh, remembering what it was like back in the olden days when you had to put gas in a weed eaters. Isn't this cool? David. <laughs> <laughs> so tell them what you're getting ready to do. I'm gonna try to get my my lawnmower up on the truck, and I don't want to wait to get ramps. This could be such a failure. <laughs> well, that's not very motivating. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Are you gonna help us? You're gonna help. Oh, look at her. Hey, make sure she's sleeping. Do you want me to help push? Stay back. Carlia, get back. Carlia. 
Get back. Come here, baby. She's on rocks. Come here. It's okay. It's okay. Come with mommy. Babe, you are so like super and stuff. <laughs> Won't be able to do that forever. <laughs> So I am following David in my minivan behind his truck. And um, <laughs> the rear end is out in the back of his truck, but it's still working. Anyways, this is our first big work day. So we're taking stuff over from our rental house to our new house, like the mower and the tiller and of course the swimming pool for the toddler, all that good stuff. Anyways, <laughs> here we are, wish us luck. Say hi to the camera. Say hi. Can we tickle her? Tickle, tickle, tickle. <laughs> yeah, it's a little grin. Just kind of kidding, but it is really fun. Check it out. I almost did all of this. She tore into it like a mad one. There was, and dust, there was dust everywhere. Was look dust at this mess. Here. But this is fun. I'll get, I will uh, come back with more progress soon and tear all this plaster out so we can have a nice clean ceiling.
Yeah. 